How different are film soundtracks from classical? Music is music, right? In very much the same way that we wouldn't perform a Mozart symphony the same way we would a Mahler, the same goes for film. You shouldn't approach a Hans Zimmer concert the same way you would a John Williams. One of the biggest excerpts horn players are taught is the solo in Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony. Before the concert was cancelled, I was finally booked to play principal on that piece, having only performed assistant on it prior. For this solo, I have received many comments on ways to improve it from various lessons, both in school and in my professional career. I have put a lot of work into this excerpt, and yet, it was only called on one audition that I've taken, and I have yet to actually perform the solo. I have many colleagues in principal positions that have never, and probably will never, perform that solo. Compare this to horn solos from John Williams' music. I have performed Leia's theme in Jurassic Park multiple times each, but those were never actually taught to me, and I received no feedback from the director during the rehearsals as well. Why are these solos treated as less important, yet are performed more? Let's take a look at a few examples of the Jurassic Park opening solo from a few performances I found on YouTube to explain this issue. The reason for this is because this solo does not appear in the movie at all. It's 100% for the soundtrack only and live performances, yet is so iconic the average Joe would recognize it. Now let's hear John Williams conducting it. Do you hear a difference? The difference is in the dynamics and style. The first call should be a medium volume, the second should be an echo, and the third is the call again but not as loud and leads into the rest of the intro. In the soundtrack there's a compressor on the track, so the volume is about the same, but you can hear the timbre difference of the horn playing it a little bit softer. In many prints of this opening theme, the echo is not listed at all, and that's also true for these performances. Wouldn't you say that echo is very important? If not, let's look at this classical example. I have been told by multiple teachers that this very short one measure crescendo in the Beethoven 6 horn excerpt is very important. So what makes that more important than the echo in Jurassic Park opening? More so that you can't even hear the crescendo on the reference recordings here on hornexcerpts.org. In my opinion, we should be performing any music to the best of our abilities, as close to the style it was originally written and intended. Taken to the extreme, this performance actually had the hornist play the echo call stopped to sound more like an actual echo. While I disagree with the decision, I very much appreciate that they really recognized the echo. This of course is not a one example occurrence. Another few examples of strange performance of movie soundtracks come from the City of Prague Philharmonic. The flute solo in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban is performed at a much slower tempo.
While a slight variation in tempo is fine, this is far too big of a change if you ask me. The style of the beginning of the track is also a little questionable. What is this music accompanying? Aside from knowing that it's meant for the Quidditch match, the music was quickly compared to the Firebird. That opening chord, in my opinion anyway, shouldn't be held out like that and actually sound similar to the Firebird. Another quick example from the City of Prague Philharmonic is their recording of the Kraken from Pirates 2, where the horn line is not the same notes as the soundtrack. The balance is all weird too and there's this funky piano part right before it as well. To me it just sounds off. I don't mean to pick on just the City of Prague Philharmonic, but those were easy examples to prove my point. To give one last example that is not that group, we can take a look at the publications of Scherzo for X-Wings. While it's a single note, it's not the same as the soundtrack. The movie also has some weird cuts in it as well that sound off when you know the track well. David McCauley posts wonderful study scores of pieces, and his of this work shows the wrong horn note and most performances I could find on YouTube have the wrong note. The few exceptions, like Galactic Empire, Scott Sutherland, Trumpet Man, although in the wrong key, De Gasparotto, again in the wrong key, and of course my own. This list of wrong performances does include one that I performed on, the Dallas Wind CD, John Williams at the Movies. I brought up the note difference because I think it's correct to play it up an octave, but it was decided best to leave it down the octave. Even John Williams' sketch for the piece indicates the lower octave, so we know it was originally intended that way. But what classical composer do we stick to their sketch versions over the final published work? There are many other examples of soundtracks and advantages to studying them, but these are the general ideas of what can crop up. There are many excerpts for different instruments that would be a perfect addition to study, from Leia's theme for horns, JFK for trumpets, the terminal for clarinets, Harry Potter 3 for flutes, Maybe Wrath of Khan for tubas. These are just examples from my horn player head, but I'm sure experts on those instruments could name some better options. So what soundtracks do you think should be studied more? Also, what are your thoughts on studying the performance aspect of film music? Is it worth it, or should we just stick to the traditional education we are currently doing? Let me know in the comments down below.